high closer to 25 200 is the call coming in but a lot of action that took place in the pharma space not only yesterday but the previous trading session as well a lot of pharmaceutical stocks doing extremely well largely on account of uh, the u.s passing the biosecure act uh, uh, we have uh, Aditya Khemka who's joining in. He's the manager, of course, at uh, Incred Healthcare Portfolio. Aditya, you know, so much happening. On the one hand, the positive uh, uh, positive is the Biosecure Act, but then the other is, are the run-ins that have taken place from the US FDA, especially for names like granules. And the third one, of course, is Biocon, not looking to sell out, and as a result of which, that stock under pressure yesterday as well. Your thoughts on the space right now? Your topics. So on the uh, CDMO space, because of the Biosecure Act, we expect uh, the order book to swell up over the next five years. And we expect execution to take place between five and 10 years. So let's be very clear on this. This is not something that can uh, you know, impact the earnings of the next one or two years, but it will impact earnings over a five or 10 year period. And the capacity expansion has already started across CDMO and contract manufacturer players. So we believe uh, Biosecure Act is a big Positive. It's a mega trend that has to be participated in by all investors, and uh, it will play out over the next decade. In terms of the uh, US FDA regulatory issues, if you look at it, uh, ironically, smaller pharma companies and companies which are on the contract manufacturing side tend to have lesser issues like that. And companies which are more generic in nature, unbranded generics, uh, like the names you mentioned, they tend to have more issues like that. So that clearly tells you that it's not the US FDA, that is the problem. It is perhaps the controls and the measures and the SOPs that these companies implement within their uh, facilities, that is the problem. But that I think is uh, you know something that is a learning process for these uh, generic uh, pharma players. And uh, they will have to continue to invest in quality and SOPs to prevent such issues. Okay, uh, so oh, since we are discussing FDA issues, uh, Aditya, let me ask you whether uh, granules is indeed under your coverage. Uh, do you cover the stock? Uh, we do cover the stock, but obviously we don't own it, so we don't talk about it. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, any pharma company that has had data integrity issues in the past has received an import alert. And if it is an import alert for a company like granules, then revenues will stop and costs will swell up. That's a double whammy on their bottom line, generally. And that does not end well for the next one or two years. I mean, generally, import alerts take two years or more to get resolved. So it will be a very uh, you know painful period for investors in the stock for the next two years. Sure, absolutely. And I mean, a lot of that was playing out yesterday itself because the nature of those observations is uh, pretty scathing, to say the least. Okay, on to the larger point uh, and the, the takeaways from this uh, you know, U.S. Act which is looking to perhaps alter supply chains because they don't want to do as much business with the Chinese now, so therefore opening up the opportunity for Indian CDMO players. Uh, from what you say, this seems to be a, a, you know, a build-up over a distant horizon, a number of years ahead. But uh, from the, the perspective of the here and now, if you talk about some of the top CDMO choices, some of the, the companies that you're most bullish on, uh, which could also be beneficiaries of the Biosecure Act, uh, what are the kind of players and the names that you're liking? So the names that we own in the CDMO space are Sinjin, Jubilant Pharmova, Vimta Labs, and Heikel. These are the names that we like. Uh, obviously, there are other beneficiaries as well. There is Lawrence, there is DVs, there is Suvain. Uh, however, we don't uh, own those names simply because either we don't like the earnings growth trajectory that we anticipate over the next two, three years, or we don't uh, like the valuations at which these stocks are trading. And hence, uh, you know, we pick and choose from the CDMO space as to what we want to own. And just, just tell us the, your valuation comfort, man. I mean, what do you think would be fair value for CDMO players and, you know, where you'd probably uh, call it excessive and uh, sort of check out? Sure. Look, uh, well, you have to understand that some of these uh, companies are actually conglomerates. Uh, they have the CDMO business, but they have other businesses as well. And hence, you know, uh, to give one multiple across these companies would not be fair because their different verticals would deserve different valuation multiples. However, just purely on the CDMO business side, I think something around uh, 20 to 25 times uh, EV EBITDA or 30 to 35 times uh, PE multiple is something that we'll be comfortable assigning. But having said that, please remember that uh, these companies are conglomerates. They have other businesses as well, which are probably lower uh, margin businesses, lower multiple businesses, and hence the conglomerate multiple will be low. 
Uh, Aditya, uh, for, uh, <coughs> of course, you manage a fund, uh, so you gave us those uh, three, four names, right? Uh, best uh, top picks. But if you had to pick one out of, the, <laughs> out of those names for viewers who are watching, I mean, it's a long-term uh, hold. What are you most comfortable with? So we have the highest uh, exposure to Jubilant Pharma as a stock. Uh, obviously, it's the CDMO player, but they also have radio pharmaceuticals, which we are very excited about as a space. We think it's a space with great uh, growth potential and very high profitability. So within all the uh, four names that I mentioned, the highest exposure that we have is to Jubilant Pharma Right. You know, you've given us the timeline of uh, the accrual of gains coming in from the Biosecure Act. Uh, what we want to understand is the size of the opportunity as well. If you could give us you know, some sort of indication of this is the kind of business that may accrue to all these players uh, because this is the size in the market right now and this is the addressable market or the capacity that we have. Yeah. Uh, so, look, last I checked, uh, the export of API from China was around $40 billion. From India, it was about $4 billion. So, you're looking some of the business from China to shift to India. Obviously, not all of it can shift. Obviously, it cannot happen overnight. It cannot happen over the next one or two years. But it will happen over the next five or ten years. Some of the business will shift. But you're comparing a $40 billion giant to a $4 billion company, uh, to a $4 billion country. You know, as a country, we export $4 billion worth of API. So, the opportunity is 10 times if you ask me, but how much of it will play out in the next five or 10 years is difficult to say. But I don't think opportunity is the challenge. The challenge will be the capacity, the execution, the compliance. I think that is where the challenge really lies. Opportunity for uh, this uh, CDMO for Indian pharma companies would be very, very big. Mystically, what is the business that we can get out of this? Sorry, could you repeat that? I was just wondering, realistically, you said the opportunity is $40 billion out of, uh, uh, versus the $4 billion that we do right now. How much incrementally yeah. can come? So, again, that's a very difficult guess to take because it depends on how much capacity they build, how well they execute. But if you take, let's say, a 20-30% market share gain versus China, I don't think that will be a bad assumption. So, $8 to $12 billion can shift over the next 5 to 10 years. Okay. Uh, all right, got that, Aditya. Thank you very much for the uh, for the summary of what promises to be a, a pretty big long term.